What's going on? Brian Tong here and Apple just released iOS 16.2 to the public. So, hey, let's jump into the new features that matter if you've upgraded or maybe you're still waiting before you do it. And obviously remember the smart thing to do is back up your phone first before doing the update, unless you don't care. But let's start off with the change that will make the biggest difference for you on the daily. There are now two new options to disable your wallpaper and disable notifications for the always on display. Now, some people didn't like seeing the wallpaper because it felt like their screen was still on to them. Now me, I love seeing my wallpaper all the time, but if you want the always on display to just go black, similar to how Android has done it from the start, in the settings, go to display and then always on display and you turn off the option to show the wallpaper. You can also turn off the option to show notifications if you want to as well. And some people have claimed that it made a difference with their battery life. Some said it's made little to none because honestly, every day usage, it can vary. But even if it helps a few percentage points, you might prefer to turn off the wallpaper. But for me, I'm keeping it on. Now, since we're on the display for the lock screen, there are new sleep widget options, one for the amount of time that you spend in bed and then a larger bar chart that shows your sleep quality or your time in bed. And if you tap on it, it then takes you to the health app. And then there's also a new medication widget. One is a single pill icon and the other lets you know when you need to take a medication. Now, let's talk about probably my favorite new app with a whole lot of room to grow. Favorite new feature, I guess, yeah. Apple Music Sing. Now, this is like a karaoke feature for Apple Music subscribers. You can look at the lyrics of a song in real time on your iPhone, iPad, or Apple TV. Then you get this slider that allows you to adjust the volume levels of the vocals for the original singer, and it just filters out the vocals with the smallest hint of them at like a really low level and lets you sing along to your favorite songs. Now, Apple has more than 50 playlists that are best made for Apple Music Sing, and it's a fun feature that you absolutely should check out. But for me, if they really want to like take it to that next level and leverage the ecosystem, let me use my iPhone as a mic with a reverb control that allows me to do true karaoke while being connected to the Apple TV at the same time. I know, genius, right? Now you can't do this yet, but if you can in the future, you know what? That would be a rad apple. Yeah! Guys, it's just a suggestion, Apple, because I know you're watching, but it's already a great start and I dig it. All right, now there's a new app in iOS 16.2, iPadOS 16.2, and macOS Ventura 13.1 called Freeform. And we know that Apple has previewed it and it is now officially here. It's a collaboration app that's this big whiteboard where you can put down notes, sketch on it, add images, videos, and links. So whenever you want to update a shared freeform document, or you could collaborate in real time over a FaceTime call. But the best way that I can describe this is uh, it's as if Apple's keynote made a baby with a virtual whiteboard app. And that's a great thing because keynote is one of my favorite apps. You see the DNA in it, and this has big potential if it fits into your workflow or maybe within your family. And we're gonna see how it evolves, but Freeform is free, like it's in the name and it's part of the new software updates. Now, it was also just introduced, but Apple is also bringing advanced data protection. It expands end-to-end -end encryption to more iCloud services and data categories. So you'll need to opt in by going to your settings, then your profile, then iCloud, and then scroll down to advanced data protection and set up a recovery key or a recovery contact. Now it will encrypt iCloud backups, messages backups, notes, photos, reminders, voice memos, and more. But you have mail and then contacts and calendar that are not protected because they're still using legacy technologies that interoperate with other systems. Also, Apple can't restore your data if you lose your password you create. So you need to be sure of this if you opt in to advance data protection, but a really nice feature there. Okay. There's also a new home app architecture with the addition of the Matter smart home standard that will allow the home app to finally be compatible with more smart home devices. So all your devices will need to be updated with HomePod software 16.2, iOS 16.2, iPadOS 16.2, and macOS Ventura 13.1. Apple says it will be, bring faster and more reliable performance for the home with more smart device compatibility. And we will see how getting Matter on board ends up helping really one of Apple's weaker areas. Okay, AirDrop, it gets an update to be restricted to contacts only by default. Now you can still AirDrop everyone. Uh, there's a 10 minute limit, but they say this was to help avoid AirDrop spam. Uh, 
I haven't had any issues of airdrop spam personally. Maybe a few random people on an airplane, maybe they do it by accident, but then, you know, I just like take a picture of my arm bent and send it back to them. Yeah. Now, this feature has been controversial because it was first implemented in China and it limited how often protesters could disperse information to each other. Over there, they are fighting for human rights and freedoms using the airdrop feature because it avoided government censors. It will revert back to contacts only after 10 minutes and then you will have to go back into the settings to switch it back to everyone so you still can do it now ios 16.2 finally brings back live activities for selected sports scores for the built-in tv app at the moment that would be for major league baseball games for users in the us canada australia uk brazil mexico japan and south korea and then you have the nba and premier league for us and canada only with expansion to other countries coming in the future now for me I am still waiting for some of the big apps that I use to finally give us live activities like rideshare apps or food delivery apps and even some other sports scores apps. But with 16.2, you got to imagine they should hopefully start rolling out more very soon. I really want this phone to feel alive and live activities is one of the ways that it's going to do that. Now, the weather app, this is now integrated with Apple News and shows weather related news based on your region directly in the weather app. Got to love that how it's all put together. And then stage manager. This finally brings back external display support with iPadOS 16.2. So if you have an M1 or M2 iPad, you can use this feature with external displays once again with up to eight apps for multitasking. Now what's new in 16.2 is that you can also drag windows from one device to another. You weren't able to do that before, but this is another option for multitasking on your Mac or iPad, but you know, it just still hasn't stuck with me for the iPad or Mac. It doesn't mean that you won't like it, but it's just not for me. And then just a couple more features that we want to talk about that are notable. Crash detection gets optimized to potentially prevent it from calling emergency services if you're riding a roller coaster or other high-speed rides. If you remember, that was an issue that happened to some users when the feature was first rolled out. So uh, maybe they have fixed that. We'll, we'll find out. There's also a ProMotion lag fix where there was some stuttering or lagging animations when closing or switching between apps. That's been improved now with the Swift UI animated layout changes that will now support a 120 hertz refresh rate in the update. So the smoother, the better, especially if that's one of the reasons to actually own a product with a pro motion display from Apple. I mean, that's why we do it. So there you go. Just some of the new updates to iOS 16.2 and more that are always connected to it. And we know that there are plenty of other smaller feature changes, but these are really the big ones that matter that I think will affect you the most. And like I said before, I always recommend that you back up before you update. And also, guess what? Wait in a few days, that's okay. Like, it's okay to see how the update goes for others unless you absolutely cannot wait, which I know that's a lot of you who are probably already running iOS 16.2 or even like the latest developer builds. But that's gonna do it for this video. You know, I was gone on vacation. I'm back now. I'm a little browner. I'm re-energized. I'm here for more videos. And I gotta tell y'all, I have some treats coming up for you for the last month of this year. So. Uh, Keep your eye out on uh, out for them because um, we haven't done a music video yet this year. Maybe one's coming as well. All right, if you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell. Ding! To get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks again so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace and love. <laughs>